So, so far up, up, up to this part of the solution, we find similarity with the solution of web equations. Okay, the main difference lies in the time dependent part because in the web equation, the time dependent part satisfies a second order differential equation. Whereas in the heat equation, the time dependent function G satisfies a first order differential equation. Okay, so now let us solve equation number six for different different values of P. And what are the values of P? The, the values of P are given by n pi by L. So let us sub substitute P equal to n pi by L here. And let, let us solve this differential equation number six. So, <clears throat> so for P equal to n pi by L, <clears throat> which, which we have just obtained here, equation number six, equation number six becomes, <clears throat> so what is equation number six? Equation number six is this equation. Now you put P equal to N pi by L. So this becomes N square pi square by L square. Okay. And then you multiply that by C square and this whole term, you call it lambda N square. Okay. So we can write this as dz by dt plus lambda n square times g equal to zero. <clears throat> so this we can write as dz by dt plus lambda n square times g. This is equal to zero, where lambda n is given by c times pi n by l. Okay. <clears throat> Now this equation has a general solution. It has the general solution. This can be solved very easily by using the method of integrating factors, okay? So first order linear differential equation. This, you learned how to solve such equation in your 12th standard. So the, the solution is very simple. The solution is given by Zn of t, this is equal to bn e to the power minus lambda n square times t. <clears throat> here n can take values one, two, and so on. And here bn is a constant. bn is a constant. Okay, <clears throat> so we su substitute the values of Gn and Fn, then the general solution for U, then U becomes, let me write it here. So, hence the function Hence, uh, the functions u n x t, this is equal to f n x multiplied by g n t. And this is equal to b n sine n pi by l x e to the power minus lambda n square t for n equal to one, two, three, and so on. This we call equation number eight. This functions, these are the solutions. These are the solutions. Solutions of the heat equation. One dimensional heat equation given by equation number one, satisfying satisfying the boundary conditions given by equation two. So satisfying equation, the boundary conditions. Satisfying the boundary conditions given by equation number two. Okay. <clears throat> and this, <clears throat> this 
these solutions, these are called the eigenfunctions of the problem corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda n. Okay, so let, let, let me write it again. These are the eigenfunctions. Eigenfunctions of the problem corresponding to corresponding to the eigenvalues corresponding to the eigenvalues lambda n equal to c n pi by l okay so by the end of step number 2 we have obtained the solutions of the heat equation now let us move to step 3 step 3 now uh, what are we going to do in the step three? Third step, we are going to solve the entire problem by using the initial conditions in addition to the boundary conditions. So we are going to find solution of the entire problem. Entire problem by Fourier series method. Okay, <clears throat> so, so far we have obtained the solutions equation number eight, which satisfy the boundary conditions. So these are the solutions which satisfy the boundary conditions. Okay, so to obtain, to obtain a solution that also satisfies the initial condition given by equation three, we consider a series of this function, a series of this again functions. That is, we can consider a summation of this again functions, that is, u x of t, we did, uh, uh, we did a similar thing for the wave equation also. This is summation for n equal to one to infinity u n x t. Okay, and this is summation from n equal to one to infinity v n sine n pi by lx e to the power minus lambda n square t. This we call equation number nine. Okay, this is fine. <clears throat> so far so good. <clears throat> then let us insert the initial conditions. And what was the initial condition? The initial condition was given. Uh, the initial condition was given by this equation: u of x zero equal to f of x. So, uh, using the uh, equation number nine and equation number three. So, from this equation nine and the initial condition equation number three, we have, that is, if I put t equal to zero, if I put t equal to zero, this should be equal to f of x. That means u x zero, when I put t equal to zero here, this becomes e to the power zero and e to the power zero is one. So we have summation n from one to infinity, v n sine n pi by l x and e to the power zero, e to the power zero is one. So multiplied by one and we don't need to write that. This should be equal to from initial condition, what was the in initial temperature distribution in the bar? The initial temperature distribution in the bar was f of x. Okay. And what is this? This is nothing but a Fourier sine series. 
right? This is nothing but a Fourier sign series, and we can uh, easily identify Bn by using the Fourier series method. So hence, for equation nine, and what is it? equation nine? Equation nine is this solution. For equation nine, to satisfy the initial condition, the initial condition, that is equation number three, the, 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 the constants B ends, the constants B ends, B and apostrophe S must be the coefficients of the Fourier sine series sine series. <clears throat> Thus, that means Bn is given by 2 by L integration from 0 to L f of x sine n pi by lx dx and n goes from one two three and so on <clears throat> okay so we can call this equation number 10. thus we can uh, we can find a solution to our problem and what is the solution? The solution is equation number nine with the coefficients Bn given by equation number 10. Okay, so the solution of, of our problem can be established by assuming that this function f of x is piecewise continuous on the interval zero to L and has one-sided derivatives at all interior points of this interval. And under these assumptions, the series given by equation number nine with coefficients given by equation number 10 is the solution of our physical problem. Okay, <clears throat> that is fine. So we have finally solved the problem. And what is the final solution? The final solution is equation number nine given by uh, with the coefficients Bn given by equation number 10. Okay, <clears throat> and see, we have an exponential factor here. And because of the exponential factor, all the terms in equation number nine, they approach zero when t approaches infinity. Okay. And not only that, the rate of decay, the rate of decay produced by this term, it increases with incre increasing value of n. Because lambda n depends upon n. Lambda n is given by C n pi by L. So for larger and larger values of n, lambda l, lambda will have larger and larger values. Larger and larger values of lambda means larger and larger decay rate. So larger uh, eigenfunctions, they decay faster. Okay, uh, I mean the eigenfunctions corresponding to larger eigenvalues, they decay faster. And the eigenfunctions corresponding to smaller eigenvalues, they decay slower. Okay, so this is the final solution of our equation. Let me stop the recording here.